Hello everyone, I am Andrea Follini, a research fellow for Politecnico di Milano and my presentation is about cluster analysis, which is uh, a comprehensive and versatile plugin for QGIS for uh, attribute-based clustering on uh, geospatial data. The application of uh, unsupervised machine learning to geospatial data is important to uncover hidden patterns in the data and data exploration in multi multiple fields, such as uh, urban planning or uh, anomaly detection for natural disasters and so on. And the integration of these methods with uh, GIS software uh, allows uh, for uh, the automa automatization of uh, the processes and also uh, allows uh, a wider range of users to access these methods. Uh, during the presentation, we will see a bit of uh, background theory on clustering and some related topics, then uh, a detailed explanation of the functionalities of the plugin, and finally, uh, a couple of uh, simple example use cases. When dealing with uh, machine learning on geospatial data, there are some particular challenges that we have to take into account, uh, such as uh, the large size of the datasets, which could uh, uh, result in uh, a slowdown of the algorithms, uh, also uh, poor quality of the data. And for these reasons, we should always have some kind of data cleaning before running our analysis. And then, uh, uh, a large number of dimensions or attributes which uh, move the problem in, uh, in a high dimensional space, which especially in clustering could uh, reduce the performance of uh, the algorithm. For these reasons, uh, the goal uh, during the, the development of our plugin are first of all to develop a tool that uh, completely covers the clustering process, not only with the application of a, a single algorithm, but starting from the data cleaning to uh, the evaluation of the obtained results. Then we want to provide uh, flexibilities for uh, what concerns both the size of the datasets and also the kind of the data that we are using. And Another important point is to guarantee that the software is uh, easy to use to every user, regardless of their uh, experience with uh, machine learning or uh, GIS softwares. Clustering uh, is the task of uh, separating a population of data points into multiple groups, uh, such that uh, the points in the same uh, cluster are uh, similar to each other and the points in different clusters are far from each other based on some kind of uh, similarity measures. There are uh, different algorithms to perform this task and some of the most common are uh, k-means, uh, hierarchical clustering, dbscan and so on and each of them has uh, their own advantages and disadvantages based on the situation. Another uh, closely related topic to clustering is feature selection, which is uh, the process of uh, selecting the attributes that we want to use during the analysis. And this is important both to reduce the total dimensionality of the dataset and so achieve better time execution and performances, and also to only use during the analysis uh, those attributes that better separates the, the data points. Another choice that we have to make before running a, a clustering algorithm is the choice of uh, the number of clusters that we want to divide our population in. And unless we already know uh, which is the target number, uh, this is a difficult choice, which is usually done with uh, graphical methods. Here we can see uh, a dendrogram of uh, hierarchical clustering, which uh, shows the entire hierarchy of clusters and how they are formed and at, at which distance they are merged. And uh, the other one is uh, a graph that shows the within sum of squares and between sum of square trends, which are respectively uh, two index, indexes that uh, shows how um, cl the sim similar clusters are uh, dense and different clusters are far from each other. After running a, a clustering algorithm, we, we, ob we obtain some cluster labels and we have to interpret these results to understand if the clusters are well formed. There are mostly two different ways to do so. Uh, the first one is uh, an internal evaluation, which is, is usually an index that uh, explains how the data points in the same clusters are uh, 
close to each other and data points from different clusters are far. Uh, and this is the fastest way to perform evaluation and also easy to interpret. While the other one is called uh, external evaluation, which is uh, a comparison of the obtained clusters with uh, a gold standard classification that we can uh, obtain before the analysis. And this is usually not so common since uh, it is not easy to uh, have uh, uh, a classification of the data points. It is both time consuming and require expertise. For what concerns uh, existing tools for clustering in uh, GIS softwares, uh, there are some solutions for both uh, uh, paid and free softwares such as Q, uh, QGIS and ArcGIS Pro, but all of them uh, lack uh, some functionalities to support the users during the entire process. And the goal of our plugin is to fill this gap that exists in GIS. Our plugin, as I said, is developed uh, for QGIS and it is developed with uh, the Python uh, library. It is obviously open source uh, and completely available in the official QGIS plugin repository. And so anyone can download the code and change it, change it as he wish. Uh, it is uh, applicable to any uh, vector file format and to numerical attributes of these, uh, of these layers. Uh, it, the plugin is composed by mainly three sections. The first one for uh, feature cleaning, the second for clustering, and the last one for uh, the evaluation. All of the sections are uh, developed uh, independently so that uh, a user can decide which functionalities to use at any time and is not bounded to a, a specific process that he has to follow. And to avoid any confusion in the following sections, uh, when I will refer to features, I will be uh, referred to uh, columns or attributes in the data table and not to rows as they are called in QGIS. Uh, the first section, the feature cleaning one, aims to reduce the total dimensionality of the dataset by dropping those features that provide few or no benefits to the analysis. There are uh, three filters in this section. The first one is used to remove uh, highly correlated features, uh, which are those attributes that present a similar uh, trend and are uh, strictly related to each other. And from a group of uh, these attributes, we can usually only keep one and the user can define the threshold for the correlation and also the criteria used to keep the, the single feature. The second filter uh, can be used to remove uh, constant features, which are uh, those attributes that contain the same unique values for all the rows. And this kind of attributes, it's obviously uh, not very useful to separate our data points. While the last one is uh, similar to the previous kind uh, and are uh, quasi-constant features, uh, which are attributes that present some outlier or few outliers differentiating from the unique values. But again, these attributes are not very good to divide the data points unless we want to specifically find those outliers in the, those attributes. The second section is uh, the main one, which contains uh, the algorithm for uh, clustering and feature selection. The feature selection can be done both manually by selecting the numerical attributes of the, of the layer, and also automatically uh, with uh, an algorithm that we implemented, which is uh, an entropy-based uh, feature selection algorithm, which ranks all of the features based on their ability to separate the data points and returns only the best one. This algorithm is uh, implemented in uh, two different versions. One that uses all of the data points at once, uh, which is obviously very uh, time consuming and it is not advised to use on data sets larger than a few hundreds of data points. While the second version uh, exploits random sampling to uh, speed up the computation and reduce the, the time complexity uh, at the cost of uh, a slight worse uh, 
feature selection, but uh, this allows to use automatic feature selection on any type of dataset. For what concerns the clustering algorithms uh, implemented, uh, we only have two at the moment, which are key means and agglomerative hierarchical, uh, which are two of the most uh, uh, common clustering algorithm. And both of them have their own disadvantages or advantages. For example, key means is faster and more, more advised on uh, large data sets, while uh, with uh, hierarchical clustering, we can uh, have and visualize the entire hierarchy of the clusters. So we have a, a better understanding of uh, how the process is done. Then we can plot the graphs that we saw before. Uh, the dendrogram is only available for uh, hierarchical, uh, while uh, the WSS and BSS trends are available for uh, both, uh, both algorithms. Finally, in this section, we have the possibility to scale our data with uh, normalization or standardization. And this task is important when we have a data set with uh, features that uh, have different units or different scales, since those could lead to an overweight or an underweight of some features. Once uh, uh, the clustering is done, a new, uh, a new numerical attribute is added to our layer so that we can visualize the results on the QGIS map. And the experiment is also added to the last section, which is uh, the evaluation one which contains uh, uh, two indexes for internal evaluation, the silhouette score and, uh, and the davis building index, which are uh, basically just a number and really easy to interpret. Uh, in this section, we also have the possibility to compare uh, different experiments on the same dataset. Uh, this comparison is done by calculating a score that tells us uh, how close the two clustering are uh, within each other. And here we can also save all of our experiment, current experiment in a, a text file. And also we can uh, load back into the plugin uh, previously, previously run experiments. Uh, as I said before, the goal for the user interface, interface is uh, the usability for every user. So uh, we try to keep keep it as simple as possible. Uh, to do so, each se section that I described before has uh, its own tab, uh, which uh, and all of the tabs uh, have uh, a similar layout. On one side, uh, we have uh, the widgets and uh, the parameter for the user. On the right side, we have uh, a brief user guide that uh, uh, explains all of the functionalities. And on the bottom, we have uh, a message section uh, to notify the users any error or the completion of the, the tasks. We also implemented an external configuration file, which contains some of the most technical parameters for uh, the algorithms uh, in the plugin. Uh, this choice is, uh, has been taken to avoid any confusion among uh, uh, less experienced users. Uh, while also keeping the possibility for a most experienced user to modify those parameters. Uh, both during and after the development phase, we performed uh, a large number of uh, experiments to um, analyze the weaknesses and the strengths of our plugin. All of the data that uh, we used during this phase was from the city of Milan, and it ranged greatly in, uh, in size, with a uh, number of data points from uh, around 100 to almost 70,000. And also, it differently a lot uh, in uh, its nature, with data from uh, climatic data, building and urban data, and also sociodemographic data. Uh, the first use case example that we have is uh, an attempt to separate the city of Milan in uh, different climate zones uh, by using uh, automatic selected features. And the features selected are about uh, uh, mean, uh, mean temperature, air temperature, uh, mean relative humidity, and max wind speed. Uh, 
the spatial resolution is a grid of uh, 100 square meters and the algorithm used here is key means given the size of the data sets which is about uh, 4000 of data points as we can see from the map uh, the plugin identified uh, some clusters that follows the morphology of the city we can see in the south and the west uh, a cluster formed by rural areas while uh, in the center of the city we have a cluster formed by areas with uh, high rises building and we can also clearly see one cluster with uh, urban par parks and so on while uh, the second use case is uh, is done on social demographic data and in particular manually selected features which are uh, on uh, the employment and education of uh, young people. Here the goal was to identify the outliers neighbors in the city we, on, uh, on those attributes. Uh, this is why we chose to select only two clusters to separate the, the farthest points. And also the reason why we use the hierarchical clustering since uh, it is more suited for uh, the task of uh, identifying outliers. As we can see from the map, uh, the highlighted uh, clusters are uh, the neighbors which are, are among the most fragile in the city. Uh, at the end of uh, the experimental phase, the plugin worked well on uh, all of the on all of each type of data and the the use cases that we tried, and also all of the functionalities were available on all sizes of the, the datasets, with uh, very few exceptions for the, the largest datasets. And to demo as a demonstration of the interest in the, in the topic, the plugin has already been downloaded around uh, 2,500 from, from uh, 2,500 users, and in a few months, and it is uh, constantly growing and we also identified two main paths for future developments uh, first of all on one end we have uh, the optimization of the software performances so that the plugin is usable on even larger data sets while on the other end we have the expansion expansion and improvement of uh, the analysis functionalities for example by adding uh, new algorithms for feature selection or clustering or uh, even new section for example one for uh, data visualization between uh, before running any analysis obviously uh, this uh, modification can be provided by the entire QGIS community given the, the open source nature of the project and thank you for the attention and I will gladly respond to any question.